is the Chase Sapphire Reserve credit card still worth it with a $550 annual fee? That's a heck of a lot of money and a very complicated question to answer that involves a lot of factors, but don't you worry, I'm going to break it down for you in this video and tell you exactly how much you need to spend each year in order for this credit card to make sense from both the perspective of a new card holder and for those of you who are considering renewing like myself. I've personally used the Chase Sapphire Reserve credit card since 2018, so let's start with this and look at how my spending habits have essentially earned me $2,000 cash back during this time. Not including the 50,000 point sign up bonus, I earn a total of 51,000 points back in 2018, of which 22,000 were in the travel category. Now, just in case you're new to the world of Chase Ultimate Rewards, basically you get three points for every dollar you spend on travel and dining, and one point for everything else. So that pretty much equates to 3% and 1% cash back for those categories. Anyway, moving on to 2019, I earned a total of 57,000 points, of which 36,000 were in the travel category. And finally, in 2020, I earned 26,000 points, where 15,000 were in the travel category. So during the three years that I've used the Chase Sapphire Reserve credit card, I earned a total of 135,000 points. And again, this is not included the 50,000 bonus points that I received when I first signed up. At a minimum, these points are worth $1,350, but the true value of Chase Ultimate Rewards is realized when you redeem your points for travel. Instead of one point equaling one cent when you use your points to purchase, let's say, a plane ticket, these 135,000 points are now worth 1.5 cents each. In other words, my points have a value of $2,025 when used for travel. Now, keeping this in mind, this effectively means that when you use this credit card as a travel credit card, you essentially earn 4.5% back for travel and dining purchases and 1.5% for every other kind of purchase. Now, we can't forget about the very substantial annual fee for this credit card. Up until 2020, the annual fee for Chase Sapphire Reserve was $450. So over that time, I spent an enormous $1,350 in fees. However, there is a $300 annual travel credit, which if you spend at least $300 every year on travel, then you're effectively only paying $150 for the annual fee. We'll talk about the fact that Chase has upped their annual fee to $550 in a second, but let's finish my real world example first. So considering everything, the annual fee, the travel credit every year, and the effective 1.5 times redemption rate for travel, I've realized a gain of $1,575 with the Chase Sapphire Reserve credit card over the course of three years based on my spending. Factoring in the additional 50,000 point sign up bonus, this equates to a profit of $2,325 just for using my credit card. Now, how does this compare to a credit card like City Double Cash, which earns you 2% cash back across the board? Based on my same exact spending habits for those three years, I would have earned $1,516 with the City card. So not only did Chase earn me more than Citi, but we haven't even talked about any of the other benefits of the Sapphire Reserve credit card, including Priority Pass Airport Lounge Access, which I estimate has a value of around $400 per year, a global entry or TSA pre-check credit every four years worth up to $100, and other one-time credits, including a complimentary Lyft Pink membership, Dash Pass membership, and DoorDash credits. I'm only mentioning these perks here to make you aware of them, but I don't want to include them in the decision-making process because I see them as just extra benefits. Let's focus strictly on your ability to earn and redeem points, and let's also include the new $550 annual fee. During the last three years, I did a good amount of international travel, so it made perfect sense for me to have the Chase Sapphire Reserve credit card. But now that I'm back in the US and won't be traveling as much, does it still make sense for me to have this credit card? Here's where we'll take a look at how much you must spend at a minimum each year for you to benefit from this credit card. Assuming the $550 annual fee and that you will spend $300 in travel to get the annual travel credit, you need to spend at least $16,666 each year. This of course assumes that none of your spending is in the travel or dining categories. More realistically, let's say you spend $3,000 on travel and $3,000 on dining each year, which is supposedly the average amount that Americans spend in these categories each year. And let's say you put another $500 per month on your credit card for miscellaneous expenses. You'll not only break even, but earn $110 in Chase Ultimate Rewards with a 1.5 times redemption value. Going back to the City Double Cash card, which by the way, doesn't have an annual fee. In the same scenario, you would earn $240 cash back. 
With that said, if you spend $5,855 in the travel and dining category combined each year and charge nothing else to your credit card, you will break even with respect to the annual fee of $550. This is because you don't actually earn points on the $300 travel credit and then the remaining $5,555 will earn you 16,667 points, which can be redeemed for $250 at a 1.5 times redemption rate, which as you know by now is the effective annual fee. So with that, I'd say that it doesn't make sense for the average American to have the Chase Sapphire Reserve credit card. Unless you're spending upwards of $6,000 per year on travel, then you're better off with a credit card like the City Double Cash card, which earns you 2% cash back across all categories. So will I be renewing my Chase Sapphire Reserve credit card this year? Unfortunately not, but as my need to travel in the future changes, I am open to reconsidering. Thank you guys for watching this video. Check out some of my other videos over here on investing and saving money. Please subscribe for more videos like this from me in the future, and if you do, I'll see you in the next one.